what's going on. What have the King and Catherine been doing? To is Prince Harry offering the King an olive branch or is there something else going on? What have the King and Catherine been doing together this week? What is Prince Andrew's strange new hobby? And is Meghan Markle trying to copy Princess Diana? Handbag. Yes, it's the Aspinall handbag. I think uh, Catherine's favourite one is the Mayfair Midi. And they're quite classic, aren't they? They're those beautiful sort of square handbags. And I think they're quite useful for female members of the royal family. As, as, um, as Charlotte says, part of especially for, for female members of the royal family, family. It's, um, it, it's part of the uniform. Inspiration and fashion. Claire Chisotti, who is from the Royals team online, pulled together the times when Meghan Markle seemed to be making an effort to echo the style choices of her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana. After much reflecting, I thought, this entire episode that the ladies displayed this past weekend, just to mentioned them in the last word in the previous episode was not justice at all. So I thought they deserved justice. So this episode we will amplify and discuss. <laughs> I can't do this with a straight face at all. And discuss the other issues they brought about that is utterly important and of course we will get to some of your comments hit it maestro The sweet symphony of hypocrisy, played with such delicate precision by our esteemed royal correspondents. One can almost hear the gentle clutching of pearls as they feign concern for the wayward Prince Harry and his apparent Machiavellian wife. Let us pause for a moment to appreciate the artistry of Rebecca English that paragon of journalistic integrity as she deftly weaves a tapestry of innuendos and conjecture. With the skill of a master puppeteer, she pulls the strings of public opinion, all while maintaining a veneer of objectivity so thin it would make Gosmer seem opaque. Sometimes, I mean, photographs are subjective. There are photographs in this video of them smiling and laughing. But a lot of the times, I think especially when he felt like the camera wasn't focused on him, I think she looked a bit mutinous and a bit miserable, I have to say. Mm. Just, uh, she said to him, hand, and he had to put out, out his hand to grab her hand. It was quite clear who, who was in charge of that particular stage management. Harry looked a bit mutinous and a bit miserable, as in Les Miserables. She opinionated, her words dripping with full concern. One wonders if she possesses some kind of unknown ability to peer into the very soul of the prince, or if perhaps she's simply projecting her own desires onto his visage. And what about Charlotte? So wonderful in red, that bastion of balance reporting. Her insights into the Duke and Duchess of Sussex relationship are truly mm, remarkable. That's the word. Concerning she appears to have, I don't know, glared into some kind of crystal ball that predicted the Y2K apocalypse, perhaps? Megan always goes front and center. She declares as if reciting an immutable law of physics. <laughs> the irony. The irony, my dearest, is thick enough to spread on toast. 
these self-proclaimed arbiters of royal propriety who attend functions hosted by the very subjects they're supposed to be reporting on objectively really have the temerity to question the fairness of others it's akin to okay get close let me explain this a little bit it's akin to a fox critiquing the security measures of the hen house while licking its chops or is it paws or whatever it is <sighs> you know in the grand theater of royal reporting these performances deserve a standing ovation not for their accuracy or fairness mind you but for their sheer audacity they have elevated gaslighting to an art form turning speculation into fact a fact of course with a deafness that would make houdini himself applaud should we give him the stand innovation yes let's do so bravo 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 team online pulled together the times where Meghan Markle seemed to be making an effort to echo the style choices of her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana. So we have, drum roll please, the mum jeans and white shirt. Oh, and here we go. The sweet irony of it all. Our esteemed panel of royal watchers once again grace us with their profound insights into the sartorial choices of the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. White shirt and mum jeans combo. She's also holding the Lady Dior handbag, which was famously renamed after Princess Diana, and she carries that a lot. So anyway, I took that, Hugh, and I took Claire's piece, and I went down the biggest wormhole. And it is, I don't think it's a coincidence. I really? think that there's, there's 10,000 pictures of Diana, and there's 10,000 pictures of Meghan, and you probably could match some things by coincidence. But I actually don't think so. I think she's been doing it all along. And I don't think she's even making a secret. I think there are times she definitely uh, echoes Diana on purpose. And we know that in the early stages of her relationship with uh, Harry, she encouraged Harry to think a lot about her mother and his mother. And and she brought Diana up a lot in conversations. And, you know, she I think she is referencing Diana. I but think she's happy with the association. Hang on a minute here. I am less interested in the Diana cosplay here because I think that is just a distraction, you see. What is more important is what she said towards the end. You see, the whole Diana comparison, even though they're trying to make a point, is to illustrate something and then with her words is how she closes the deal but i'll get back to that but just to you know be fair because i think what's good for the geese is good for the thank you thank you for all those who responded so let's see who's really cosplaying princess diana
Oh, one can almost hear the collective gasp of horror. That's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, no, it's not the same. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Again, what's good for the geese is good for the... <laughs> Thank you. The audacity. Oh, what a scandal. But wait, wait a moment though. My dearest, let us not forget the true crime here. For while Megan's investment in a small, ethical business... It's clear that her investment in this bag company is a threat to the very fabric of British society. <laughs> so, of course, they had to, I mean, parade a collection of British handbags that the real royals favor and highlight its affordability. Did you say affordability? Oh, of course I did. Affordability. The bags are like over 800 pounds. That's not affordability. Oh, darling. Just, just pennies and, and crumpets and all these things. Just shut up. Go away. Go away. Go away. They're affordable, darling. Very affordable. Pensioners can buy it. That's how affordable they are. Oh, the trolling, the trolling, the trolling. Oh, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> Listen. Our panel conveniently overlooks the fact that their own beloved royals have been hacking and overpriced everything. Let's concentrate on one thing. Let me see, what could it be that recently created this big... Oh, jams. Yes, jams. <laughs> so, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, sent out a few jams to some friends and people she knew. And, of course, the Earth almost rotated backwards because of this. One must wonder if there's a secret royal recipe for hypocrisy. Perhaps handed down through generations, along with the crown jewels? Talking about jewels, what happened to the set of jewels that have gone missing? Somehow no one talks about that anymore. Um, um, panel, panel, excuse me, Rebecca, Rebecca, Re 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 Rebecca. Oh, she's not listening to me today. But I wonder what's up with those jewels. It's particularly amusing when one recalls Omid Scobie's revelation that the palace actually encouraged both Kate and Megan to emulate Diana's style. Oh, the horror. The manipulation. The completely <laughs> logical PR strategy that apparently only becomes problematic when Megan does it. One can almost hear the connective dissident echoing through the halls of Buckingham Palace. But you know what would make this little comment a little bit more interesting? Maybe I should have said a source. Let's try that again. But it's particularly amusing that Meghan Markle would have done what she did. A very well-placed source of mind who shall go unnamed, but very, very close to all the important decisions and communique, said to me that the palace, actually, the PR strategy in the palace did recommend to Princess Catherine to emulate the dear and loving Princess Diana style. And as we know, Princess Catherine is extremely close 
to the Princess Diana. You know, my source that is very well placed said Catherine has a shrine to Princess Diana. And I'm not surprised at all because she's so close to the to the beloved Diana. Now no the fact that Megan has taken what is supposed to be for Kate for Catherine I'm sorry folks I'm getting quite emotional here she just took it she just she just took it she said it's mine it's mine and she took the, and started to emulate the late princess my source in Buckingham Palace said Princess Kate was devastated she, she she cried for seven days and seven nights. Oh, the horror. The horror. Was that too much? Too over the top? No? Yes? Yeah? I don't know. I'm somewhere in the middle. But this thing, this lingering... I was going to say another word, but, you know, not, not, not going there. This lingering thought as I have watched this video... For the third time, there is something there, and I think I've got it. Because I felt it the first time I watched it. I sort of went, hmm, confirmation the second time. And by the third, I went, well, it's kind of obvious what they're trying to do. Because there's a narrative here. Truly is. There is a narrative that will bring everything together. The royal family again. Has that changed, if anything? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about the idea of him wanting a reconciliation. I'm not plumbed into what Harry's thinking is, but I do think it was very interesting that he made that transatlantic dash to see his father for just 30 minutes mm. when it was announced that he had cancer. And I think there's a lot to read into there. Um, As regards the apology, I think what this boils down to is the royal family have called his bluff. Um, they haven't reacted to any of his demands or his threats, either publicly or privately. I mean, they... ...pretty much ignored the fact that Spare had been published yeah um and i think i think we're probably all familiar with this that it's almost like dealing with a toddler having a tantrum mm. it's like don't listen don't make a fuss don't give in to it mm. just let it through it'll blow over mm. and you know harmony will restore itself and i think that she's invested in and you, you can see the very familiar pattern starting to build up and one of those articles was saying she just wants peace now she just wants peace but uh, again this ignores the fact that if these reports are be you know to be believed and obviously we are dealing with you know anonymous sources here but if that is the case and that there's a complete lack of understanding that sometimes when things are said and things are done they can't be undone yeah that's caused immeasurable hurt to people and you can't just click your thing and say well we want peace now everything should go back mm. to how it was before that's that's not life life doesn't happen like that it's interesting so rebecca there was news that oh rebecca 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 hmm. i don't even know if i should respond to you you suggest that Megan's involvement in promoting a new handbag brand is part of a very familiar pattern, implying a calculated strategy to manipulate public perception. Yet this overlooks the broader context of her investment, which supports women-led businesses and sustainable practices, a move that aligns 
with her long-standing advocacy for social causes. But you wouldn't know that? Or that is just something you willfully ignore? Moreover, your assertion that Megan's desire for peace ignores the hmm, immeasurable hurt caused by past events is a curious stance, especially when considering the relentless scrutiny and racially charged narratives she has faced, many of them coming from the publication that pays you, that you represent, which you are an editor. The portrayal of Megan as someone who can simply click her fingers to erase past grievances is a reductionist view that fails to acknowledge the complex dynamics at play. You moron. It is worth noting that Megan has consistently been the target of hostile media coverage which has often ignored or downplayed the threat and challenges she has faced, including those highlighted by former Met Police Assistant Commissioner Neil Bazou. Oh, you know, Rebecca, every week you don't stop to amuse me. You are a sad, sad little... <clears throat> I'll stop there. Hey, this is only take 60 seconds, I promise. I know you have choices in what you watch, so thank you for spending some of your valuable time here with us. If you are discovering this channel, please show some love to the subscribe button. It's kind of lonely and kind of needy. For those who are awesome supporters of this channel make sure you have your notification bell on and you know what show some love to the thumbs up button as a matter of fact let's all show some love to that thumb up button so it can pass inspection when the algorithm comes by let's keep this love fest going and leave a comment or share if you're able to become a member awesome or donate to the channel with super thanks keep this little engine going Thank you all for your support. I appreciate you so much. Much love. Let's carry on. The most nauseating aspect of this royal circus is the relentless hate passion of Megan by these self-appointed guardians of propriety. These white women, perched atop their ivory tower of privilege, seem to take particular glee in tearing down a woman of color who dared to enter their hollowed realms. Their thinly veiled racism, wrapped in a veneer of concern for royal protocol, is as transparent as it is repugnant. The narrative spawned by these royal commentators is a masterclass in subtle manipulation and dangerous insinuation. The discussion around Meghan Markle's supposedly cosplaying of Princess Diana is a prime example of this where innuendo is reeled like a finely honed blade cut in deeper than any overt accusation ever could. The panel's insinuation about Meghan Markle's fashion choices and their psychological implications for Prince Harry are a textbook example of dog whistle tactics. The commentators, particularly Charlotte, and Rebecca 
suggests that Megan is deliberately manipulating Princess Diana's style to manipulate Harry by exploiting his emotional connection to his late mother. This narrative is not only unfounded, but borders on character assassination, as it paints Megan as a scheming figure, mimicking Princess Diana as a psychological controlling tool. The implications of this narrative are deeply troubling. By suggesting that Megan is cosplaying Diana, the panel is subtly framing her as a manipulative outsider, someone who is not only trying to insert herself into this royal narrative, but is doing so at the expense of Harry's mental well-being. This portrayal taps into racist and misogynistic tropes, casting Megan as the other who is disrupting the royal family dynamics. The insinuation that she is playing a psychological game with Harry is a dangerous narrative that undermines her agency and vilifies her for simply existing within the royal sphere. Throughout the episode, the panel weaves this narrative with a calm demeanor that bellies the insidious nature of their commentary. They employ dog whistle tactics using coded language and insinuations to reinforce harmful stereotypes without overtly stating them. This approach allows them to maintain a facade of objectivity while hmm, subtly stoking the flames of public opinion against Megan. The panel's repeated emphasis on Megan's supposedly influence over Harry, coupled with their portrayal of him as a helpless victim serves to infantilize, infantilize him and strips him of his agency, further entrenching the narrative that Megan is the puppet master behind the scene. <laughs> this dangerous rhetoric is not just limited to fashion choices, as you may have seen. It extends to the broader discourse surrounding Megan and Harry's relationship with the royal family. By perpetuating these narratives, the panel contributes to a climate of hostility and racism that Megan has faced since joining that institution, family. The implications of such commentary are far reaching as they reinforce a toxic media environment that has real world consequences for those involved. In a world where media narratives can shape public perception and influence behavior, the panel's dog whistle tactics are not just irresponsible, they are potentially harmful. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, I am not putting my head in the sand. I will continue to call this out. They don't get the right to own the narrative. They don't get the right to continue demeaning 
the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. They may fool other people with their hand tricks and, and fashion this and handbag that. We see you. We see your evil demeanor. A facade of calmness and properness. We see you. We know you. And let me say this. There is an army of us ready, already doing the work that we need to do so that people like you and the hateful rhetoric that you continue to spit into the world, the energy that occupies the darkness of your soul and your heart, it shall not bear fruit and shall not prosper. We see you. We see you. Don't you have to achieve something, buy houses, get married, no. have kids, get travel, get this and that, achieve something in life, leave a legacy? No. You, you don't need any of this to be happy? No. Like, maybe you don't know what happiness actually is, but happiness is to be. It's a state of being. Happiness, my son. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone who took the time to leave a note, leave a comment. I appreciate it so very much. I do read all of them. Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't get enough time to respond to all of them. And I'm trying to do this a little bit more um, frequently. So I'm able to pull out some and actually respond and um, have this kind of interaction. Ah. <sighs> I have great um, thoughts and, and, and things I want to do, but the execution sometimes doesn't happen because a million things come my way and, and I get very frustrated when I can't deliver things a certain way or if I've made a promise and I don't hold up to my end of the bargain. But anyways, enough about that. So your comments, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And we start out with Connie and Marsha, um, both Connie Bomber and Marsha Williams. Thank you so very much for the super thanks. I absolutely appreciate it. And um, it's the weirdest thing, as I've said this many times before, I don't know how to ask for stuff like that. Like I really don't. Um, and to be quite honest, it's 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 been a bad thing also for my career because <laughs> for um, a very long time I've always been underpaid, <laughs> and then when I realize I'm being underpaid by a lot, I'm like, ah, uh, what is wrong with me? But I am learning, and um, as you may see, there is now that recording that I've pre-recorded, and it will have um, that I hope I remember to include it in every episode, but thank you so very, 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 very much. And our first comment, of course, we give priority to our members and, um, Connie. So Connie said, um, Antonio, that's brilliant. So thoughtful, so clever. You have put them in the right categories. Thank you, Antonio. You had me, you had me laughing. Well, Connie, let me tell you, I, this particular um, episode was going to be something else. Actually, it was going to be, there was three different things I was thinking about. But the more I 
kept trying to do the other two, it just wasn't working. And when I have that kind of block, I, I, I keep thinking, look, fate is trying to tell me something. So maybe I should just concentrate on this third one, which I did. And as I started to do it, it just kept coming to me. And even the stupid, silly voices and stuff like that, like it just, <laughs> I, at one point I kept thinking, should you redo all of that? Because like it, it doesn't sound very serious and this is a serious matter. But at the same time, I want it to be fun. And I want to, in some ways, um, create mockery to these people because we need to mock them. It's similar to, and I'm going to, you know, I'm sure politics is going to come up in, in my, in my um, response. It's sort of like the thing that gets under, you know, that orange person's skin. And the Kamala Harris campaign have figured it out, like calling him small and calling him like making a mockery so people can realize that he he's 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 not this big, you know, intimidating bravado man. Like when you think about it, like the things he says, the things they've done, it's just weird, right? And they're being called out for it. So ah. I try. And every time I finish one of these episodes, I just cross my fingers and I go, I hope they like it. I hope they like it. But at the end of the day, I usually ask myself, are you satisfied? Do you think you've done your best? And I'll say maybe once or twice, maybe I've might've put out something where I went, uh, I'm not satisfied, but I need to put this out. And funny enough, those are the ones you folks like the most. <laughs> Which is so weird. <laughs> like, it was so like, I don't know about this one. Like, it's kind of blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing I know, that's like 2,000 likes or something. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, you know, you never know what's, what's going to hit and what's not. So thank you very, very much, Connie. And thank you for always being a wonderful supporter and being a, being a member. Our next is Marsha. Hello, Marsha. How are you? I hope you're doing fantastic. Um, and thank you for being a member. And Marsha writes, Antonio, great undertaking. I can't see what is there. I think it's a newspaper and, yeah, newspapers. Okay, news. Um, the days of media reporting like Royal Rota is a dying breed. A new day of truth is dawning. You know, Marsha, I hope so. I I am, be, having said that too, I'm so disappointed in the whole thing because there are media institutions that I looked up to because I learned so much with their um, investigation reporting or they'll go to a certain country in a conflict zone and explain what's happening, explain why you know, you can have a territory where there's like five different tribes. They're from the same country, but then different territory fighting for this piece of land. And I was like, why are they doing that? They're the same people. But they would explain these things to us. And they would hold politicians accountable for for um things. Like, like just just honest, right? And it's so disappointing that and I, I wanna say we have allowed but the minute that money got in to the newsrooms of every single uh, newsroom, whether it was ABC, BBC, a a any, any of them, the minute money got into it, because I, I might be in, I hope I'm correct, but I have this in my head somewhere. So either I read it or I heard it or something, but newsrooms before were not a profit center for the network. Right. They just saw it as their um, civic obligation. So newsrooms did get a large budget to do stuff. Right. Um, but they were never asked really to, you know, you have to produce ratings and all of that. And with now the so the, 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 the short attention span that that people have got. And I am I'll, I'll include myself in in that um, they just click. And I found it such a good. And maybe that's why I, when we moved, I was very annoyed a little bit of how the news 
was being delivered because there was no background. There's no explanation as to, well, why was there a fire there? Or um, it was just this quick thing. Oh, there was a fire in 284 Highway 28. Um, there was some propane cans that blah, blah, blah. And then they moved on to the next thing. Everything was just a minute, a minute, a minute, a minute. And I'm like, well, what's the story behind it? How do we humanize this stuff? And I think the more we've gotten into that, the more we also have dehumanized ourselves because stories are not being told. I think that's why when we see stories of people and we can understand and empathize with them, we are genuinely moved by their stories because we, we, we're, we're humans, right? Thank you very much. And thank you again for being a member. Okay, our next is Joan Garcia. Hello, Joan. How are you? I hope you're doing fantastically great. Um, Joan writes, Hi, Antonio. Just got your podcast. Thanks for your counterpoint, counter punch. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Um, how clueless is that circus of British media clowns? We've just watched them chew in their poison and drowned in it. Their hate-filled words, cruelty and lies will never stop Harry and Meghan from their humanitarian endeavors. God is shining and covering Harry and Meghan. Oh. I love how Harry and Meghan display their own photos and videos of their activities on their website. Take care. Joan, thank you so very much. And thank you for being a member also. Um, a quick story about Joan. She might not want me to say it, but I'm going to say it anyways. And Joan, I hope you forgive me. Um, when I started this channel, um, I would say within the first couple of, of, of um, episodes that I, that I put out, Joan was one of the first people that contacted me and said, um, oh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, she said, whenever you become monetized, you're able to like have members. Tell me immediately because I am I'm going to become a member. And Joan, thank you. <laughs> it's meant a lot to me and it still means a lot to me. Um, I think, oh man, <laughs> what's wrong with me? I, 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 again, as I just said, it's, it's so disappointing and infuriating to watch, to see what the tabloid press, what media in general in the UK and beyond have become. They're cruel. You know, there are movies that I've watched, whether science fiction movies or whatever, and they're usually futuristic movies. And you're seeing a time where because someone did something, whatever, they now have to play this game and it's a game of survival and the, the very wealthy bid on people's lives and so on. And I've always looked at those movies and thought, I really hope we never become that. And I had this one professor in uni who said, if you want to know where we're heading, become a frequent watcher of futuristic movies, as in science fiction. He said the technology and the way we may be is already being written. So it's, it's, it, it could be any of these options, but it's already been written. And I, I am afraid that a lot of what he said, for me, it's kind of coming, coming to pass. And watching how, especially that, that I'm paying more attention to, um, what's it called, palace, confidential, or whatever, I, I, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm paying very, very detailed attention because one thing is what they're showing. It's like, here is the show, here is the show, blah, 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 blah. But there's an entirely different subconscious conversation through words, through the way they, they, they construct a sentence, the way they talk about something that is being psychologically branded in your brain. And I, when I realized that, I went, oh, baby Jesus, this is even more profound than I thought. Like, this is not random. This is well thought out. And even today's episode, like, as I was watching it, and I kept thinking, okay, there, there is an underlying message here. And I, is it, is it what I think it is? And when I watched it for the second time, and I thought, oh, my gosh, they're psychologically telling you that Megan has purposefully mimic Princess Diana, all her mannerisms, her way of dressing, all of that, in order to entrap Prince Harry. But you see, they don't come out and say that, but they show it in segments, but that's the ultimate message they're sending to you. It's just evil, man. It's evil and cruel. So I, 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 I don't know what's, what needs to happen because governments are not, the government is not doing anything about it. I think our bigger media corporations, they, they, they erroneously look at these tabloid stuff and sto stories as not important. And because, and I've noticed this, because Megan and Harry are of a certain um, socioeconomic wealth, he's a prince, um, she's a duchess, um, people tend to ignore their stories. It's the same thing with mental health. Oh, well, she has meant, oh, please. It's the same thing with so many of these derangers, right? I, I, I cannot fathom, like, so many people, especially women, who are just like, oh, but she had a castle. What does she want? I, I, I would have done whatever they said. Well, you know what? She didn't want to. And the things that they were putting her through was not acceptable to her. It must have been acceptable to you if you think it was. But you know, people have a big mouth, right? Or what, what do they call them? Uh, backseat, backseat drivers, right? When you're not the one driving, oh, well, I would have done this. I would have turned there. I would have sped up. I would have done oh, Shut up. It's not your experience. You didn't go through it. <sighs> And Joan, I agree with you. <laughs> May God always shine on them, on all of us, on all of us. Thank you. Okay, next one is Sharon. Sharon, thank you for being a member and thank you for the love. That was a short one, eh? A short message. <laughs> I send you back all three loves, man. There you go, Sharon. And our next one, let me see which one it is. Beryl, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. If I'm not, my apologies. And um, again, my apologies. <laughs> um, and Beryl writes, hi, Antonio. That was an awesome take on those hateful UK royal media. But nothing lasts forever. This too shall pass. Love, Harry, Megan, Archie, Lilibeth, and Doria. Amen. Amen. I agree with you. I think everything has a cycle. Everything has a beginning and an end. Our lives have a beginning and an end. But, and here's my but, and I go with this with, with, with fate. You know, when people say, for example, oh, well, I prayed and I'll give a, a really silly example. Like, like someone, someone saying, oh, well, I prayed, so I don't need to study for that exam. 
and you're like uh what yeah i prayed i prayed on it and god told me that i'm gonna be fine so i'm gonna just go you know i'm gonna play video games i'm gonna do whatever no god gave you everything that god has given you in order for you to help yourself now god can help god will guide you as best as you're willing to receive those messages but if you don't study you're not going to pass so my whole thing or my approach right now has been i know all of this is in the hands of the almighty i know all of this that god already already has it all planned out but that doesn't stop me because i don't know what my role is in god's plan i know there is there is a role and there's a role that each and every one of us are 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 fulfilling right and I seek counsel all the time, especially if I'm going to do an episode or a topic that I feel really nervous about, or I feel like I don't know if I want to touch that or say this, because this, this platform also is very odd and weird. Like they promote all these hateful channels and they say these things, they, they don't get suspended, they don't get canceled. While, you know, I've, I've been like, there's the things that I've had to do in order to like, keep things going because they'll, 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 as I've said before with the music, I've, I pay for all my music that is on the channel. And they're always like, out of nowhere, just de demonetize everything and just say, no, everything, you, nothing. And it's not like I get any money or anything from the channel. Like the last thing I got, I think was $50. <laughs> and I went right into like buying software stuff to like put the, for designs, <laughs> right? Um, so it, it's, it's an interesting thing, but I, 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 was, I, I felt like I was called to it. And I often ask for gui gui um, guidance. So even though I think we know that God Almighty has the plan, I still think that we have to be, um, we have to be activated, right? Like even speaking to my, my um, whether it's uh, my friends or, or, or a relative, and if the Sussexes come up, and they start saying things that are incredible. Like I'm like, hey, 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 hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. But I always go in with, with an ask for permission. Because if you're not going to engage with me in an honest way, then I don't, I don't need to waste my breath, right? So I'll say, actually, I've, I've been doing a lot of things on that topic. I actually have a channel. <laughs> And I have done a lot of research and I would say I know quite a lot of that, that interaction and what is happening there. Um, it seems that you hold a certain opinion that I would consider that is not um, well informed. Would you like to have a conversation and hear the other side of this story? And if they do, I have that conversation. And if they don't, I say, that's okay. You know? <sighs> well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next one. Carolyn. Carolyn says, um, the way you show the British industrial pollution disaster and the overt um, related racism, violence in the background of the ah." Uh, Creating fairy tales is brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I I debated 
whether I should do that or not, whether the sort of pollution images would be too strong for some people. But I wanted to create a distinction because words pollute, intentions pollute, actions pollute, but we don't see them sometimes. What the British media is doing, what people like Rebecca English and, and Richard Eden and Richard Kay and all of them, all of them, what they're doing is they're polluting the very air that their people breathe. They're polluting the, 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 the brain and, and, the, and the well-being of people because they're giving them misinformation. They're putting people's lives in danger. And I consider it to be evil, evil, because they know exactly what they're doing. No one can convince me that they don't. It's with purpose. The way they speak about Harry, the things that they, that they insinuate, the things that they say, and, and it's all very much so coordinated. It's coordinated. So thank you. Sometimes I get really nervous too because I'm like, okay, am I going to? Get, is YouTube going to send me a message and say your channel has been suspended? Oh my goodness! Thank you very much, Reba, Reba Bira. I hope you're doing great, Reba. Um, hello, Antonio. I love love it when you rip the UK tabloids. A new one. They are trying to infiltrate USA uh, media with their racist, sick poison but we have exposed their sickness. UK tabloids work with the Heritage F F Foundation. They are seeking Harry's visa information. They came up with Project 2025. Oh, oosh. we must defeat them decisively in November. Antonio, you are reminding me of Antonio Banderas. <laughs> While listening to your commentary, loving it. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, so when I was younger, sometimes, well, especially in North America, uh, they say Antonio Banderas. And I'm like, no, Antonio Zapato Jr. Because I used to think Antonio Zapato Jr. was better looking than Antonio Banderas. But um, Antonio Banderas is such, an, such, such a fascinating character fascinating person. I love the movies he's done with Pedro Almodovar. I love Pedro Alm Almodovar movies because they make me think. And they have these, 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 these twists and turns that I don't expect. And they challenge me because they sort of, at times, make me really uncomfortable. And I love that kind of un um, uncomfort because it's 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 making me challenge what I think normal is, and I like that challenge because it opens my my mind and my horizons to to um, to the way I see the world and the way I see people and the way I accept people. Um, so it, it's great in regards to. It's very interesting to me because, again, and I've said this a gazillion times, I never noticed it when I was in the UK because we never bought tabloids, never really watched much te um, television. We watched the news usually or some series I would get like hooked on. Um, so I never paid attention to it with the exception of here or there. I would hear, you know, they'll be talking about some celebrity person or something or one of these infamous reality shows. And I'm not, like, I don't, I don't watch a lot of reality shows. The one I, I still love is Amazing Race. Um, and the rest I don't really care, care that much for. Uh, but it is, look, there is a movement that is happening across the world and doing what we're doing 
I've said this also before. For me, looking and being involved in this, um, I'm going to call it fight, in this fight has exposed me to see all the other fights that are happening and that they're all interconnected, right? I'll give you an example. Harry is the type of man that every father should be proud to say to his son, that's a man, right? The husband of the of Kamala Harris, he loves his wife, adores his wife. Now, let's not get into what happened between his first wife and that situation. We weren't there. You know, that's that is that is that is their thing too, that their experience. But the way he is present day and the way he talks about his wife. And the love for his wife, that's a man. There isn't this, like, what's his name? Paul, Paul, Paul Hogan or whatever. This idiotic testosterone lacking injectable something, um, fake persona of definition of a man. A man does not need to raise his hand on anyone. A man does not need to exert his masculinity in order to be a man, right? So there's two camps right now. The one with Andrew Tate and, 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 and their definition of what a man is. And we know his situation and the awful things he has done. To women and how he, he made his money and then you have men like right um coached coached him harry right you have these men who show up and not only show up but they're gentle in their approach they're loving like Megan Kelly the other day on her on her show was calling the vice president's husband um I don't know weak or some kind of nonsense like like that like their definition is is just corrupt to call Doug a weak man because of the way he shows up for his wife right to call these men who, who, are, who are just what men should be. To be able to show emotions, to be able to, 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 to hug your kids and, and, and be proud of them. Show up for them. Show up for your wife. Not be intimidated that, you know, she may have a, a, a higher paying job than you do. Take on responsibilities that you share, not this nonsense and these stereotypes of what a man should be. And I'm, I, I'm hearing this echoed so much because also looking, watching uh, um, at the UK media and the tabloid of how they define Harry. So to them, Harry is broken. He's not a man, he's broken. Megan has, has, has broken him down. He's some feminist nonsense now. When that whole episode came out about William, right? Getting into an altercation with his brother. And they were all treating it as if, as if it were two, two nine-year-olds getting into a squabble or stuff. No, this was adult men in their 30s and 40s. Like he... But that is not acceptable. That is abuse. And that tells us that there's something not well with the other brother. 
while the UK media and a lot of other media around the world with their macho bravado treated as, oh, this is just a scuffle, oh, and even went as far as calling Harry a wimp. I would like to see you, right, pilot the Apache helicopter. I would like to see you go into battle the way that man did. I would like to see you stand up against all odds to an entire institution, an entire country, in defense of your wife and your children. I would like to see you have that call. Hmm, let me just not say it. But you know, the 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 the, the tests, you know. I would like to see you have it. Because a lot of you, a lot of them, big <laughs> right? And just cowards. Absolute cowards. Oh my goodness, I just realized I've been talking for 30 minutes now. I need to do these things faster. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, next one, next one, next one. I think I have four more to go. Okay, next one, next one. Next one, um, Sharon. Sharon says, thank you, Majesty Sussex Report. You should play Sam. Oh my gosh, Sam Cook. Keep moving on. Really beautiful. Give all of us something to think about, especially the people in Britain. Uh, Sharon, thank you. Very, very much. I love that song by Sam Cook, by the way. And he goes, I was born by the river. And I lit. Okay, all right, all right, enough, en enough. <laughs> but I love that song. I love it. Um, I find myself, when, when I'm in a certain place, emotionally, mentally, physically, there's certain music I gravitate to. And it's music like this I gravitate to in order to be up uplifted, in order to say, Beyonce had this thing where she's, it was very cathartic for me. It, it was the visuals. Uh, um, it was uh, Black is King. Yes, I think, is, is it Black is King or King is Black? No, no, I think it's Black is King. And I watched that entire thing when it came out. And... There were parts of it that I just weeped. And there was one line that she said, she goes, I, I hope I don't butcher this, but you can't wear a crown with your head down. You can't wear a crown with your head down. And that meant so much to actually hear that because it was like a shock of a message that came to me because I, oh, man, I don't know if I want to say it. Oh, okay, I'll say it. You know, I, I, I received two different types of messages as I grew up. And one of them was, keep your head down. Stay out of trouble. Keep your head down. Keep your head down. And I've always been, mm, mm. Mm. And when I heard her say that, I went, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You can't wear a crown with your head down. And I kept thinking, Give me my crown because I'm not putting my head down again. You know? So thank you. Oh, man. He's like, I'm not doing these things anymore. <laughs> <You've>, <laughs> emotional here, buddy. Um, Fuan says, um, <clears throat> Prince Harry did not see his dream girl in you. Are you talking about me? <laughs> so stop the hunger <laughs> for Harry and move on. Oh my gosh, Fred, that is so true. Because that's what I kept thinking. I can't stop thinking that they all have this fantasy 
that somehow, somewhere, they were going to be the one who would end up with him. And if it wasn't them, then it would be someone else like them. And they would be willing to accept that. They can't accept that it's a black biracial woman. And not only did he fall in love with her, but he's basically said, I don't want any of this nonsense. You're going to treat my wife like that? Goodbye. Goodbye. Good riddance. And no matter how much you people keep insisting that I'm calling my papa, I'm going to do this, and I'm calling home, and, and, and this best friend said I, I miss. Do, shut up, people. Because it's not true. The man has said it a gazillion times. I ain't going back. I ain't going back. And you know what's telling to me? When Rebecca English said, well, look how quick he jumped on a plane to come to see his father when his father was diagnosed with cancer. I'm like, what kind of family did you grow up in? That's what family does. That's what no matter what has happened between you and your family member, you show up at times of crisis. The guy heard, no matter what has happened, it's his father. At the end of the day, it's his dad, right? Heard that his dad's diagnosed with, with cancer. He jumped on a pain. He's like, my dad, let me go show my face and see what I can do. I mean, his dad was an ass. Excuse my English. Because Charles doesn't know to be anything else than what he is already. He's not going to change. No one can convince me anymore of how cruel that man is. He's cruel. Because he's chosen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it there. Let me go to the next one because I, I feel like I'm going to have too much to say about that. Mary. Mary Man says, um, the media savvy Sussex says, keep Wiping the floor, um, oh, 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 sorry, wiping the floor with those Royal Rhoda clowns who know nothing about the plans of the couple and always in inventing the most ridiculous <laughs> shaving cream. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. I love it that Harry just was like, he showed up, like, I think, I think someone said ninja, Harry, he showed up for his. Um, uncle's funeral when all of them were said he's not going to show up um, blah 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 he's already said it and he's just like I'm here as as people say you know Mon there's no leaks in Montecito and they've surrounded themselves with the people that they trust and this is another thing with this whole people depart in and, and oh they they always have the staff turn around and this and that number one they don't know what the contracts are. I know for every job I've had, there's been a period, whether it's three months or six months, that is a trial period. Every job I've had, right? And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work out. Now, also, I think for some people, right, they may be going into this job or that job thinking it's going to be like all the other jobs. And I have a feeling that the way Harry and Meghan work, they expect you to show up. Like, show up. Like, I, I, I read this, I read the, the biography of the, of the, the guy um, who founded the four, the four Seasons Hotel. And he was talking about how much they invest in their hiring process to get the right people. Right? He said, because their people who were innately, they're innately born, they're born with service in their DNA. Not, not, not servant, but service. If you go to someone's home, you'll see hospitality. They, they, they want to they wanna take care of you. He goes, that we can't teach. It has to be within you. We have to find you. We can teach someone how to clean a room. We can teach someone how to check someone in. We can teach someone how to do this or that. He goes, those things we can teach, that's not a problem. 
but we can't teach someone how to be kind, how to be in service of, how to understand that together. And the way the Four Seasons work, if you know, it doesn't matter how high up you are in the company, if you're walking through the lobby and you see trash on the floor or, or um, a, a chair or a sofa that needs to be put back in the room, you don't call and say housekeeping or call and say, hey, technical people. No, you fix it. You fix it. And that's how they maintain that, that, that sort of luxury um, service, right? So I have the feeling that for those people who this big kerfuffle all about, is that sometimes they go into these jobs thinking it's going to be similar to their former corporate job where they could just, you know, lay back and give orders and fly in the, in the jet and, and, and give a speech here and there. No. No, I'm sure Harry was like, if you're going to be my chief of staff, like, here's an entire thing that you need to be taken care of. And he's like, what? <laughs> I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying, like, you know, there's a possibility. And this is the last one, folks. Um, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Elizabeth, as I was say to my mama. Um, thanks, Antonio. Um, those people have no conscience. It's for the love of money and hate. The royals are in bed with the tabloids. I pray they reap what they sow. Oh, baby Jesus, may your words be heard in God's ear. Because, uh-huh, amen, amen to that. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Say it again. No, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> um, yeah, what else can I say? You are on the dungeon. You're on the money. And um, I don't wish people ill. What I do wish people is for them to come to realization of what they've, they've done or what they're doing, to have an epiphany to have a moment where they go, oh my goodness, what am I doing, right? And and change their their ways. But these people know what they're doing and they're doing it with intention. And I, I, I know what they want. And I think we all know what they want. It's not gonna happen though. It's not gonna happen. Mm -mm, not happening. There's too many of us now. Too many of us. <sighs> That's it. Thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time to say hello, to say thank you, to say um, you enjoyed the episode. Uh, to just leave a comment. I appreciate it. And I love you all. Thank you for being part of this channel. And thank you for accepting my my baby <laughs> i i i always want to make sure i bring the best of me at that time and moment to you and thank you for accepting it and welcoming it the way you always have until we speak again please be kind to yourself be kind to your loved ones and to stranger you meet that is crossing your path and you crossing theirs be kind whenever you can ciao ciao